I am honored to introduce our next speaker today. We have with us Ted Balistrieri, one of the founders of Dorona. Ted is also the owner of Cannery Row in Monterey, California, which owns and operates most of the businesses and restaurants in Monterey. Ted, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I certainly uh, was the general managing partner of Kennedy Row, and we have some partners in that, and CEO of, the, of all the rest of the companies. We have a hotel company as well as the sardine factory. And, and my partner, myself, just to give you a little background, we started October 2nd, 1968, way before you were born. We opened up the sardine factory. That was a very exciting day. We had $960 to our name. Uh, we had to survive. We hit the lights and it just took off and never stopped. And uh, here we are almost 52 years later. And, uh, but truly the most challenging time was this year. And one of the reasons for the most challenging time was out of our control. When things are out of your control, you feel a little bit helpless about things. And the hardest part of that was to let people go, uh, close down the restaurant. I mean, I just don't remember my whole adult life, the last 52 years, not having that restaurant open. The only time we close is during the holiday, uh, Christmas time, and clean it up a little bit, or we had to do some remodeling, but it's never. And... Uh, but it tries men's souls, you might want to say, or people's souls. And uh, uh, we had uh, probably the uh, one of the roughest times we've ever had was worried about the employees and, and their bill. You know, they're the least that could afford this shutdown of all people. Bert and myself would survive it. We have other companies, we have hotels, but uh, they had it rough. Thank God for the PPP. But one of the good things about this is we're also in the golf business. Golf shot up through the roof. Outdoors activities are shooting up. People are getting used to outside dining. Uh, you're going to see a lot more of that stay around for a long time, more outside dining. People are getting used to uh, picking up meals through the back of the kitchen and food to go. So I think this, uh, in spite of all of this, it it got people into the habit of doing things they normally don't do. Pick up from the uh, restaurants, eating outside a lot more. And uh, I think a lot of this is gonna have a residual value going into the 21st century. Uh, the bad part is, uh, just like we're doing now, there's more and more Zoom. Zoom this, Zoom that. And uh, even though the economy is coming back, and we can see it's coming back big time, especially in the leisure travel uh, and fine dining, and people want to get out, they want to eat, they want to enjoy themselves, thank God. But the group business is going to be a little slower. People are realizing they don't have to go to New York for one day, go to a board meeting the next day and fly back. They could do it Zoom. And I think Zoom's here to stay, and it's going to, I get chip away a little bit about the big conventions and a lot of the meetings in which you had to travel a long way and there's expense and the time. So I think that'll have some merit financially, but it's going to hurt travel and convention business. And we do 70 million tourists a year from around the world. And unfortunately, 30% of the world right now, uh, is not getting vaccinated, even in America. 30% of the people don't want the vaccine. Healthcare workers, 27% of the hospital yeah, didn't take it. Until we have a standard uh, policy and where you have something on your passport or on your iPhone or, or some way of saying that you're clean to travel, the tourists that we get from out of the country all ships rise when you have 70 million tourists come to this country. They eat in all the best restaurants, all the gas, the hotels. And that's going to take a little longer because right now the criteria is you have to show you had a vaccination or you have to show that you had the virus and you built up these types of immunities 
or you're going to have to be tested right there at the airport or 72 hours before. Uh, so until we have a, a seamless type of way all countries buy into it for traveling, you're not going to see a lot of this world tourists from all around the world come back to the United States or us leaving right now. A lot of countries you can't go to. So we have to have a kind of United Nations of all the countries to buy in to a seamless standard of rules, a Bible of how you can travel uh, and every country uh, abides by it. Because people are afraid every country is different. Some states are different. So uh, of all this comes out, we'll have to bring us all together a little bit closer in the future. Uh, a lot of the safety measures and the sanitation members, uh, uh, security members will be in place for a lot longer after this virus leaves. I always tell people, great, stay at the hotels, eat the restaurants, stay cleaner than your home. We put up, we put, I guarantee, many more restrictions. So our campaign is stamp out cooking at home. It's safer and cleaner to eat in a restaurant. We have stricter requirements than you do in the house and in the hotels. So you want to be safe, stay in a hotel and eat in a restaurant. So You're anyway. You're absolutely right, Ted, that you bring up a great point. And I mean, you mentioned the impact of tourism that we've seen, how as far as uh, Monterey goes, you see millions of people, millions of Never million people. a year. Exactly. Uh, so where do you stand now and how is it currently being impacted and how have you been impacted over the course of the past year and a half? We have seven hotels, five we operate. The leisure business is coming back, the family business, the leisure. And 62% of all our customers that stay in a hotel travel up and down the state. You know, they're not out of state. They're just people just getting away from San Francisco, LA. We used to do about 12% foreign travelers. That's zero, practically, you know. And that's going to hurt because they spend the most. The further people travel, the more they spend. They don't tax the schools. They don't tax the social systems. It's like confetti. They travel on the highways at different times. And it's the cleanest dollar in the world. They don't, we don't have a smokestack industry. Tourism is the greatest dollar we could possibly get, uh, especially foreign tourists, because they leave their money in the home. They don't tax the schools, the social services. So... That's going to take a little while to come back on conventions. And, you know, usually when you book conventions, it's a year or two or three out. And we, we haven't seen that bounce back yet. We've seen the leisure travel just jump, but not, not the convention business. It's been very slow coming back, if any. Absolutely. And, you know, getting that many people together at the time just for based on restrictions is impossible. Um, but it's great that we're starting to see it recover. And, you know, hopefully it does get back to a point that we've seen historically. Um, obviously, everyone in the restaurant industry is very optimistic about this. Um, and, you know, relying on local customers as well and getting um, everyone local to Monterey in as well. Do you find that you do have a lot of local support? Yeah, but you got to remember Monterey, we have uh, about 5,000 rooms and, and uh, our biggest things are Concord Delegance, the car show or the AT&T Gulf. Uh, local support is great, but you already have about 40,000 people that live in Monterey and you're probably in Monterey County, you probably have 400 some restaurants. If everybody went out, they'd have their own, almost their own dining room, you know. So you need tourism to sustain, especially Dorona types, quality restaurants. First thing people say, what's the best restaurants in town to go to? What's this? The, what, you know, and uh, they're going out for a dining experience. We have a saying at the Sardine Factory, my partner and myself, if we made you feel at home, we made a million dollar mistake. Our job is to make you feel better at home, or why the heck would you go out? And we never, ever advertise home cooked meals. If we can't do a better job than they do at the home, why would you go out? Absolutely. And the Sardine Factory, as you mentioned earlier, celebrating 52 years of operation. Wow, what an accomplishment that is. So congratulations to you. 
uh, and all your successes. That is uh, the Dorona restaurant on Cannery Row. Um, and bringing in Dorona, I mean, you've been so instrumental in Dorona as a business. Uh, is there anything that you would like to speak yeah. to uh, on how, you know, Dorona has been such a great company? Well, I want to I want to thank you and Dorona for keeping us together because some of the greatest experience of my life were meeting with my peers, all my heroes over the years, some of the great restaurants that my partner and myself used to look up to. You know, a lot of them are gone today. And uh, uh, good. To, I heard, I hear every once in a while from John Arena. He used to have a famous one in Winston. And there was uh, the Gotti brothers in San Francisco that had Ernie's and Jerry Burns at 21 Club. And I can go on and on. Ella Brenner in New Orleans. They were my heroes growing up. Most of them were gone. Those fine dining restaurants. Well, here's the most important thing. We used to dine. Now people eat. There's a little difference. When you would come into a restaurant, I would allow two hours, two and a half hours for you to die. Today, they want to get in and out in an hour where the service stinks. We eat today. We used to dine years ago. I don't know where we lost civility somewhere down the line, but I used to require a shirt and tie to come in and all. I understand the casualization of America, but I think they're losing a certain cachet the way it used to be with the fine dining, the white gloves, the service. We're doing well, we're surviving, we're doing well. But there's a certain charm of that formality that we lost somewhere along the line. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know what? I've had the privilege of doing a lot of research on John Arena. Uh, you say he's one of your heroes. I've been able to read a lot about Winston's. And I must say, uh, on behalf of myself and a lot of everyone viewing, you know, you're really one of our heroes. So thank you so much for being such an inspiration. And, uh, you know, as we conclude today, we would love to hear some words of wisdom that you might have for fellow restaurateurs going forward and overcoming all the challenges that may come. Uh, most importantly, you know, the challenges that we've been able to overcome over the past year and a half. Well, there's two or three. I use the word win, W-I-N. What's important now? You can't look back, not gonna change. You're not sure what tomorrow. So if you wanna be a success, use the word win. Take care of what's important now. And always remember the two most important characteristics is courage and character. Character, uh, courage to do what's right and character to know what to do is right or Well, character to certainly uh, is two of the most important things you need in a restaurant. You can't let this thing deter the quality of the service. You got to keep that standard up no matter what. And nobody coast uphill, just downhill. So you got to keep pushing. A person who said he never had a chance, never took a chance. So you got to keep pushing. Once you start the coast, you go this way. You got to keep figuring new ideas, new menus, new ways to excite your customers and hospitality is the business we're in. Thank you so much, Ted. Thank you for your time today and sharing with us uh, so much informative information. It's great to hear from you as always, and we wish you all the best in Monterey. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to seeing you.